If you live anywhere in any kind of habitat throughout the entire United States, chances are you've seen one of these snakes on your screen right in your own backyard. These are all different regional color morphs of one of the most common snakes, if not the most common snake in North America, the Black Racer. This is one of the most overfeared and quite honestly misunderstood snakes in the US. And at first I can see why, with a menacing looking face and a tendency to show up unprovoked in even the most urbanized of areas. But today, we're getting up close with an individual of the southern subspecies of black racer here in South Florida to learn whether or not you should fear these beautiful animals and so much more about their fascinating biology. All right, children, this right here is one of the most common snakes all across North America, the black racer. Specifically, this is the subspecies Colubra constrictor priapus, or the southern black racer. Black racers are completely non-venomous, and I would not be handling it like this if it was a venomous species. But this species is extremely variable across its range, and there are dozens of different subspecies all across North America that are extremely variable in color. Here in South Florida, we get two of those subspecies. This one, which is the southern black racer, which as you can see, has a mostly dark belly and is completely almost shiny black on the top. And we also get the Everglades racers, which are more of a matte grayish color with a white or kind of yellowish tinged belly. In some other areas in the United States though, there are some subspecies that could be bluish in coloration, mottled black and white in coloration, and even a few subspecies that are kind of greenish and yellowish in coloration. But there are a few traits, despite the very variable coloration, that can help you identify a racer. Number one, their bodies are extremely long and slender, and their scales are smooth, kind of diamond shaped. Their head is very rounded and streamlined in appearance, with absolutely massive eyes. In fact, their eyes are so large, it's pretty much a diagnostic trait if you were to see a snake shed and can't tell what pattern it is. The humongous eye caps left behind on a shed will let you know when you have a racer. And in almost all the subspecies, they have this contrasting white chin. Black racers can be found in a variety of habitats and are extremely adaptable. Right now, we're in a kind of dark pine flatwood wooded area, but I've also seen these guys in open scrub habitats, cypress swamps, and marshes, and so much more. Their adaptability and being able to live in a variety of habitats has allowed them to be found in basically all corners of North America, and also to become probably the most common or at least one of the most common snakes to be found in urban areas. These things' diet mostly consists of lizards, but they can also take down small mammals, frogs, and even other snakes, including venomous snakes. These are an extremely, extremely beneficial snake to have in your backyard because they can eat a variety of pest species that you probably don't want around your house. And unfortunately, I know a lot of people will actively seek these black racers out and try and kill them, but I cannot stress enough just how important these beautiful black racers are to the environment and how especially useful that these, as well as basically every other snake species, can be to have around your house. This is a relatively small black racer right here, and it has the adult coloration. It's basically lost all of its juvenile coloration with a juvenile black racer would be kind of a grayish and brownish, kind of grayish and reddish brownish mottled color with a checkered belly. And this individual still does have a little bit of that checkering on the belly, but the top is now that plain black coloration of the adult. But black racers do get significantly larger than this. This is one of the smaller black racers I've seen. I've seen them get at least twice this length and width before. Right here where we are, we're actually kind of in a little bit of a hybrid zone between the Everglades subspecies and the black subspecies. And I'm very sure that this is a southern black racer based off mostly the habitat as well as just how dark it is on top and on the bottom. However, around this area, I have seen some of the intergrades, which are darker in coloration than the Everglades racer, but a little paler than this. As you can see, it just gave my finger a little tag there, but these snakes, at least in Florida, are not bitey at all. Now, I still don't suggest picking up these snakes, but this is not anything to fear if it's around you. In fact, most likely this snake would just scurry away and just dart into a bush if it were to see you. Because just think, this tiny little thing is probably more scared of me than any of you watching are of this snake. Weirdly, even though I said that these snakes are not bitey when they're caught, at least in Florida, I've heard that throughout much of their range, these snakes are known to be quite defensive when being handled, which is again why I'd highly stress to not just randomly pick up these snakes. 
I suggest leaving these snakes alone. As you can see, this black racer is flicking its tongue quite a lot. That is because it's quite curious about what is going on right now and is absorbing as much possible information about its environment and about me as possible. Trying to figure out whether or not I'm a predator, trying to figure out what I'm doing, just kind of handling this here. And I was actually relocating it to another spot because I noticed it was in a vulnerable area where it had the potential of getting squished by a ladder that was around the area. But like I was saying, it's tongue flicking a lot. And the reason they do that is actually to, to smell the scent particles that are around them. And you might wonder why are snakes tongues forked? Well, it's actually because that allows them to tell what direction a scent particle is coming from. When a snake picks up scent particles in the air with its forked tongue, it then presses it against the top of its mouth, where the scent particles get processed by an organ called a Jacobson's organ. Using this, the snake can tell where the scent particle came from and also what direction it came from because of the forked tongue. A lot of times I go out and look for snakes at nighttime, but black racers are diurnal. And while their tongue flicking does allow them to locate prey, their main threat is their amazing vision. These things, like I said earlier, have massive eyes for snakes compared to the body size and the head size. And this allows them to see the, even the slightest movements of prey items that are very far away. This combined with this snake's extremely fast speed and precise ability to tell the direction of scent particles using its forked tongue allows these to be some of the most efficient hunters out here in the pine flatwood ecosystem. And it's a reason why these snakes are among some of the most common animals you might find out here. Their strategy of living seems to be working perfectly for these little guys. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning about this beautiful southern black racer right here, but it is time to let this amazing snake go right back into the wild. I'm going to take it far away from that ladder so this snake does not get hurt, and hopefully this snake will keep hunting down lizards, frogs, and small mammals out here in the pine flatwood ecosystem.